Good afternoon to everyone who is tuning in from all around the world, actually, not only here in the UK. Today we have for the second part of the Satipatthana series, uh, Venerable Dr. Sri Panya tuning in from the Gold Coast Buddhist Center in Australia. He has um, accepted the Dhamma Center's invitation to be a part of this series, which is conducted in the memory of Venerable, uh, late Venerable um, Nyanadeepa Mahathera, who passed away late uh, in late September. He was known as the father of the forest monks in Sri Lanka, being one of the most senior forest monks who were residing in the forest of Sri Lanka for more than five decades. So it is in memory of the life and practice in a way of paying reverence to the right life and practice of Venerable Denmark Nyanadipa that we have come to organize today's session. So I hope you all join together with me in inviting Venerable Dr. Sri Panya to uh, start the session. Thank you very much. Okay, can we start now? Yes, okay. To, let us together uh, recite the Namaskar at the image. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa. Uh, greetings to you all from uh, Australia. Whenever uh, I, uh, uh, I'm giving a talk to the United Kingdom, it's all past past my bedtime. Uh, so this time, uh, I was invited to give a talk on uh, Vedana Nupassana, Vedana Nupassana, um, a series of talks actually on the four foundations of mindfulness. I was asked to do uh, on the topic of Vedana Nupassana and uh, as uh, Venerable Panya Mansa said, uh, this is in commemoration with uh, late Venerable Jnana Deepo's uh, passing away. So before going into the topic, I would like to, <clears throat> so because I'm uh, honored and privileged uh, to have this opportunity. Uh, when I met uh, with Venerable Nyanadipo, I was 17 years old. I was a schoolboy uh, soon after my uh, A-levels during uh, the little period that I had uh, time with uh, before starting my uni. Uh, what I did was, uh, we went uh, uh, to uh, different uh, monasteries and at that point uh, I went uh, with few of my friends to a Belluloya monastery and uh, that was the time that I got to meet uh, Venerable Yanadipu. Uh, during those days he would only come out uh, once a year. It was very difficult to meet him. Only very few privileged people from Colombo had the opportunity uh, to see him once a year. Uh, otherwise, uh, you had to get in contact with this uh, monk at Bilhulu Monastery, and he's the only one who knew which monastery he would be dwelling at that time. So it will take another 45 one hours uh, walk into the jungle, and, uh, and then only uh, you have to wait for him to come out for Pindapath. Uh, at that time only you can meet him. So on this particular occasion, um, I got this very opportunity of seeing him and we had a discussion and uh, not only that, uh, I remember it is the first time that I was introduced to the teachings of Ramana Maharshi because uh, we have the oldest living uh, German monk at Belhulia Monastery, Venerable Jnana Ramita. He's the last of German monks still surviving very old and he's the one who gave me a book while I was waiting to go into the jungle to the forest with the group to see Venerable Yana Deepo. <clears throat> so I have, uh, I have memories, yes, I have, I'm, 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 I think uh, I'm lucky that I met Venerable Yana Deepo in my life, although it was very brief. 
uh, but uh, some brief uh, meetings are very profound and powerful. From a time known uh, with Ajahn Chas, like he only met with Ajahn Man for 15 minutes. He, he was not with him even for 24 hours. Uh, but he started his own uh, forest lineage in the Mahanikai, where Ajahn Man belonged to Damayun Nikai. And Marpa Nanshak, Marpa Pong, that lineage uh, is there because Ajahn Chah met Ajahn Man for 15 minutes. That's what I heard. So it's very rare uh, you meet one of these monks, you meet a teacher, and uh, these rare encounters open you up and they speak to you, uh, and with their power, their grace, their blessings, their teachings can. Uh, can uh, uh, can uh, open your inner guru, uh, open uh, your heart to the teachings, and uh, that is one thing. <clears throat> then, uh, because they have lived a very pure life, when they are no longer, we can always reflect, and you know, uh, that is a strength in our spiritual path that. Uh, we have met such uh, gurus, you know, it is an indication that we are on the right path. I think when it comes to uh, me, myself, and even with uh, Venerable Panyawansa, uh, the teachers that we have met are very rare, you know, unless you have enormous good karma, uh, even uh, to meet Venerable Naurini Aryadhamma Thero, who's going to be a Buddha in a future life, and to have met a Bodhisattva in this very life, I don't think, I think that's a very rare opportunity. Yet alone meeting a Buddha is very rare, but uh, we call the Buddha Ankura, a Bodhisattva, who's on the path to become a Buddha. Meeting them in your life, I think you have to have a certain amount of luck and good karma. So uh, during my life, uh, to date, uh, I met uh, so many good monks like that. Narani Aridhamma Thero, Madhya Panyasiya Thero, when I was small, I was with Balangoda and the and uh, and uh, more recently, uh, I was with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Uh, they all call themselves Bodhisattvas. So, in your life, when you meet these uh, individuals, holy people, practitioners, uh, you have uh, you can have a certain uh, amount of confidence. Uh, that you have good karma, you know, we belong to a circle, we belong to a spiritual circle that we are bound to, you know, we are, our path is laid in front of us that we are <clears throat> carrying on with uh, the, the lineage of the Buddha to be so called. So, um, so today's the second part, I heard Mante Yoga Vachar Rahul gave a wonderful talk on Kayanupasana uh, and we are uh, talking on the four frames of mindfulness or we call the four foundations of mindfulness and you have to wonder uh, when we always Satrasatipattana, when we always say four foundations of mindfulness or four frames of mindfulness, why these, uh, there are only four why this Kaya Nupasana, Vedana Nupasana, Chitta Nupasana, Dhamma Nupasana? Why we have four places that uh, Buddha asked us to uh, keep our attention, focus, contemplation, and uh, go deeply into these four places. And we have to think why, you know? Uh, why only four places? Why you have to reflect on your body? Why you have to scan your body? Why you have to be mindful of your body? why you have to establish your so manasikara of your body. And then uh, why you should be uh, with your feelings, sensations, why you should be with your thoughts, why you should be uh, with phenomena we have to think. I think uh, the reason why we are establishing uh, our mindfulness or our focus or uh, deep contemplative uh, attention to these places, because these are the four places that our ego is deeply rooted, our self is deeply rooted. Uh, we establish our Sakkhayaditi, we have the Sakkhayaditi, we have this false sense of identity the, uh, that is deeply rooted in these four places, in the body, in your 
sensations, in your thoughts, in your mind, in your phenomena, in the phenomena. So unless you penetrate into these four places, you will not be able to see through and dissolve the, dissolve the body. Uh, so uh, first comes uh, the Kaya Nupasana, but uh, a lot of practitioners ask, uh, a lot of practitioners ask, even Venerable Panyavans was talking to me and said, you know, you need to do a guided meditation after this, uh, this uh, talking session. And uh, I find it a bit difficult because when it comes to serious practice, people on a short notice after one hour's talk, they ask, you know, so many questions. Bhante, whether we should do Kayanupasana separately or can we do all these four types of mindfulness separately, individually? Or all these are encompassed in one type of meditation? I think these kind of questions come because uh, those people who are interested in doing meditation, they don't sit down with one master. They don't sit with one person and carry on for a long time. You know, you should, uh, you should work with one teacher. That's the most important lesson that I've learned. When I left Pauk and came to Pandita Rama, uh, Sado Pandita's first question was, he was really not happy with me. He said, I can't love you, Win, because you are coming from a reputed monastery called Pauk. Pauk is no different to our monastery because Pauk to Sado is also a very famous monk. And Sado Pandita's question was, why are you here after so many years at that monastery? Why do you want to come and see me? So I was like, uh, you know, what's uh, now I have to give a proper answer. Otherwise, you know, I can't just lie and say because you are famous, because I want to do Vipassana, you know, that kind of uh, dumb answers don't work with Sado Pandita. So I honestly said, uh, I am, I am, uh, a seeker, I need to explore all types of meditation. So I just want to, uh, uh, because I've done a lot of shamatha at Pauk, I would love to, I mean, I would like to uh, take the teachings of Mahasi. Then he said, uh, only a beginner in spirituality would do spiritual shopping. But now you are an established monk. So our goal and practice should be uh, to dig at one place, you know, until you find what, if you uh, go on uh, digging at different, different places, you will not find what anywhere. I think the similar analogy goes with uh, one of uh, even Ajahn Chah's stories, I'm, I can't remember, but this is what uh, uh, Sayadu Pandita told me because he was not happy to take me in. I went with another famous monk, uh, Sayadaw, nearby, whenever Panya wants to know uh, that Sayadaw also. So he's the one who uh, talked to him, say, Sayadaw, please accept this student. And his condition was, okay, if you uh, follow, uh, if you are willing to uh, adhere to the rules of Panditaram, and if you are willing to take instructions and forget all the instructions given at Pau, you are more than welcome to stay. So that is how I got my opportunity uh, to study under Sado Pandita. You know, he was never, he's no hanky panky monk. So the same question goes, if you are interested in doing meditation, my, uh, my uh, advice to you is uh, we developed on meditation because we had good teachers and we uh, stuck with them. I mean, we, we were, uh, we were, working with them every morning, you know, interviews every morning. There was no opportunity for us to read and go through different spiritual practices and go and talk with them and argue about, you know, whether this is right or not. Uh, there was no opportunity. We simply had to take their instructions and go and practice. Uh, now, of course, uh, uh, you have the YouTube, you have different teachers appearing here and there, you know, and uh, they give uh, a lot of uh, appealing talks. But when it comes to practice, you're not working with one. People uh, don't investigate Dhamma, you know, people like to investigate the teacher. But the uh, idea is to investigate Dhamma, Dhamma no Dhamma Pratipada, not, not, uh, not to investigate the teacher. And, you know, as I always say, uh, our our goal is to investigate Dhamma. Investigating the Dhamma is investigating the four foundations of mindfulness, working with your body and mind. So uh, it's very important. 
uh, because these uh, instructions uh, uh, doesn't have to be, these are very basic instructions, you know, working with the teacher, having interviews, having a meditation journal, and, and, you know, because you get fed up and bored, then, you know, because the teacher doesn't look appealing and, you know, he's not famous, you go on to another teacher. You know, my Tibetan master actually said if in the Tibetan tradition, in their text, they say if a teacher has more than 50 students, don't consider them to be a good teacher. But... Uh, that's a bit difficult, you know, because he's only the Dalai Lama has so many, I mean, every so many students around the world. But if you want to progress in your spiritual practice, the practice, you have to find a teacher with a niche uh, group of students. But uh, these are commentaries, these are ideas and uh, views on practice. Uh, uh, so other idea, my idea when I'm giving a talk to uh, give the audience as much as possible, uh, uh, the instructions, uh, you know, time tested, the valuable instructions that I've gathered through my journey uh, in my holy life. <clears throat> because otherwise, uh, uh, for a monk, uh, it's always questions and questions are all uh, very repetitive, uh, very monotonous and the same question, you know. Hardly anybody would uh, go into deep meditation and ask a valid question. Every day we encounter very superficial questions, you know, how to do this, do that. And I see uh, rather than lack of practice, it's uh, the commitment or it's not, it's, it's you have, you have uh, not observed the rhythm, how this lineage of meditation from master to student, how this has been carried from generation to generation, you have to follow this line, you know, that is very important. So my advice you, uh, to you is do a little bit of uh, spiritual shopping and work with a proper teacher. That's very important. And uh, today's topic is Vedana and Pasana. Uh, like I said, uh, in the four foundations of mindfulness, uh, we keep our, we construct a self when it comes to sensations, feelings and this is one of the unique, very unique uh, inventions by Buddha. I can't remember whether I told this very fact during my last talk, uh, because during Buddha's time, uh, when it, especially when it comes to certain Hindu practices, the Vedas and the yogic practices, not yogic, the, uh, the, uh, uh, like the Vedas, especially um, uh, when it comes to Upanishads, uh, unless you talk about uh, the Advaita Vedanta, the rest of the Upanishads or Vedas. Uh, okay, not to go into that area. Uh, during Buddha's time, you know, we, we uh, the Vedana was not there. Uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, contact and just craving. You know, you have an object in front of you and you create a craving or aversion towards that object. Uh, so what most of the yogis did was uh, they rejected the material world. Uh, the, the Nigantas, the Jains went into naked, you know, completely. They got rid of the material world. They completely stayed naked, you know, just. But Buddha is the one uh, through his wisdom, he inter intervention uh, the outside world is linked through Vedana, our sensations. So there's no point in getting rid of anything material, you know, unless you have, unless you look into the sensation, you look in, uh, to the, uh, you know, pasapacha, the contact, then comes the sensation. With that sensation only, you will have, whether you like it or not, the filtration of sukha, dukkha, dukkha, masukha will happen through uh, Vedana. So it is said uh, Vedana is the most unique invention of uh, invention rather than invention. How, how, what kind of word can we use? Uh, it is the most important discovery of Lord Buddha. And uh, in his same, very same teaching, Buddha's teaching, Buddha in many, um, in Samyukta Nikaya, in many places, Buddha says, if you can go beyond sensations, 
then uh, that is nibbana because uh, the sensation or vedana is the one uh, uh, that takes us towards uh, craving pasapacha vedana vedana pacha tanha so when you have sensations when you have feelings either you have uh, craving or either you have aversion or you have ignorance so this is the uh, very uh, mundane filtration that we all have through our six sense basis uh, if you if you can understand this filtration uh, anything that is coming from your eye ear nose uh, skin sensation tongue uh, or your mind if uh, this uh, uh, filtration happens uh, whether you like it and uh, either you dislike it or either you are indifferent to it then uh, you are entrapped with the you are trapped in the paticca samuppada circle vedana has uh, 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 phenomenally i mean it, it it belongs to two places first of all it belongs in the five clinging aggregates rupa vedana sanya sankara vinyana then also it belongs to one of the 12 links of the paticca samuppada avijja paccha sankara sankara paccha vinyana vinyana paccha nama rupa like that you uh, vedana takes you all the way up to tanha craving so unless uh, you have the skill or the training uh, to penetrate into vedana uh, you will be uh, either falling uh, i mean basically you are creating kilesas basically you are creating a story basically if you don't understand sensations uh, you create a world you create a self then you have uh, uh, yourself in relation to a self you have a outer world and uh, when then you don't know how to relate to the world that you create through sensation you are on a rat race you know you because of sensations vedana because of sukha vedana dukha vedana uh, the world is like this you know people are after happiness people are trying to reject unhappiness all because they don't understand the very concept of vedana so vedana the pali term vedana comes from the juncture vid vid means to experience experience what the experience uh, the object to grasp the object but the very characteristic of vedana at the end of the day you to experience object is the explanation but when you ultimately experience the ob- object the very idea of the sensation uh, the characteristic is uh, the three characteristics anicca dukkha anatma there is nothing more to it when you observe when you say vedana is uh, uh, vedana is to uh, understand an object Uh, to feel an object is vedana and its characteristic is to experience and the function is to realize the object once you have realized it your answer should be what you what you understand the wisdom that comes through understanding object should be always uh, the three characteristics but in our ordinary mind pattern in our ordinary day to day life our sensations don't take you there our sensations our vedanas our everything takes you to conclusions of whether you like it or you dislike it or because you don't understand it you are lost so this kind of living takes you into the extremes explained in buddhism it doesn't create a, a life of equanimity Uh, it doesn't create a, a being i i i mean I, there is a certain uh, when it comes to explaining dhamma please understand words can complicate you to be honest okay so you have to take very carefully what i am saying because i am also very limited in my uh, uh, the, the the words that i choose are also very limited uh, to explain something very wholesome and very rich it's very difficult because i am also using i don't use much pali in my english talks so 
please understand what's wrong with our everyday today but we have sensations what's wrong with that um, the problem is we go into extremes we create a world we create duality we create an object we create uh, uh, the subject and we are lost in between the object and subject we create the world and we suffer but through our sensations whatever sensation whatever the thing that we feel in a practical level if your conclusion is this is impermanent this is uh, suffering and this is uh, selfless or uh, substances i mean no substance that is the answer that you should experience but you can only come to that level through deep practice now when the panyaman sir was saying you know you need to do a 30 minute meditation after my talk now it's not easy to come to a vedana level just like that you know the goenka goenka method you have to go the first three days or four days you have to do anapanasati then the rest of the days that you scan your body and uh, look at your sensations when it comes to uh, when it comes to anapanasati uh, you only can uh, you only can come to vedana through uh, like uh, 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 uh like going through the first four steps then the uh, uh, if you can remember the uh after pasambayan kaya sankaran on that level only you can uh, ultimately experience uh, uh sukha dukha well, usually uh, we work with uh, happiness sukha priti sukha level that is when it comes to anapanasati sutta but uh, we uh, there is also the same explanation in a different uh, perspective in mahasati patana sutta i will cover that little later uh, so uh, i have explained you why we are keeping our attention to these four places because in these four places our self is deeply rooted and uh, our sakhaya diti generates from these four places when it comes to vedana why it's a unique discovery by buddha and how it creates a connection to the world that we create ourselves and within this world we go into extremes of uh, happiness and happiness and uh, we swing from this unhappiness to happiness because of uh, because we don't know how to contemplate on vedana uh, so uh, buddha is very uh, precise his teaching is very uh, concrete you know i mean uh, what is vedana what types of vedana uh, can we have basically three but uh, we have bahu vedana sutra he divides this vedana into uh, uh, five three five eighteen thirty six one zero eight one hundred and eight multiplying into faculties this and that but basically we are working with sukha vedana dukha vedana adukkama sukha vedana that is arising from the body then he divides sukha vedana dukha vedana somanasa vedana domanasa vedana and adukkama sukha vedana so what is the what is the difference between somanasa vedana and domanasa vedana sukha vedana dukha vedana is pleasant body sensation and unpleasant body sensation domanasa vedana somanasa vedana pleasant uh, mental feeling and pleasant unpleasant mental feeling and neither unpleasant or pleasant uh you can or you uh, adukkama sukha is a term for term for both uh, body and mind uh so in your day to day practice everybody wants to do anapanasati everybody wants to loving kindness meditation to what extent are you sensitive to your sensations and uh, and have you ever questioned what's wrong with these sensations what's the problem that we have you know i have already given you the problem i have also uh, given you the answer also how we should be what is the conclusion you know when it comes to sensation uh, the the conclusion that mind should have but we don't have that conclusion so uh what do you think you know what do you think uh, when it comes to the sensation uh what uh, imagine you have a pleasant feeling pleasant sensation what is the problem with that now anyone can say you know in retreats uh, people are very easy very quick to answer what is the nature of a pleasant sensation nobody has said they are anicca dukkana you know 
uh, they are impermanent, they are transient, uh, there is no substance, or they would say it is emptiness, it is shunya, there is nothing inside. But before going into that, there is something that you need to observe. You need to have uh, an overall understanding. Why, why, what's, uh, what's the problem with uh, the pleasant feeling? Uh, uh, what, what, what kind of, what, why, why these feelings, why these sensations deceive us? You have to tune into that. So the basic understanding that we have to have is pleasant feeling is pleasant when it persists. You know, if, if, uh, if uh, uh, a sensation is pleasant, everybody wants it to last forever. As long as it lasts, you're happy with it. But when you don't have it, when it changes, it's not going to be pleasant anymore. Uh, the how do I say? You know, uh, the, we always suffer. So people, people think suffering is only when you are suffering. You know, you have to have an accident. You need to experience hardcore life situations to experience suffering. But people don't understand the suffering of just being like sitting right here. You know, I'm sitting on a chair. I can't sit at one place. You know, I change my posture. Even at sleep, we turn from this side to that side. The moment our bladders are full, we want to go, go and pee. The moment we are hungry, we want to eat. So by labeling these actions, peeing, eating, turning, bending, what are we trying to do? We are going to cover up the aspect of suffering. So Dhamma in Dhamma, it is said, uh, the nature of suffering is uh, uh, you 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 like to uh, uh, you know how do you say sweep it under the carpet through uh, changing your postures even in meditation that's why you are not allowed to change you know the moment you want to change you can't there's something called sati sampajanya you know so through sampajanya you change your posture but if you are too quick to change if you are too quick to change your posture if you are quick to change uh, 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 what you are trying to avoid, then you miss the chance of observing the sensation. You know, this uh, very nature of suffering is 24 seven with us, but we can understand, we cannot understand that because we are too quick to uh, remedy them. But uh, people don't understand remedy, suffering cannot be remedied. You know, suffering cannot be remedied. Suffering is something that you need to understand and accept and realize. So the very, uh, very uh, antidote to suffering is, you know, deeply going into Vedana. So that's the most important thing. So the painful feeling is also the same. Painful is painful feeling is painful when it persists. You know, when uh, you are sick and uh, going through pain, uh, uh, you are always worrying, you know, you never know when this will go away, you know, uh, the cancer patients even, you know. Uh, but uh, they, at the moment they have pain, they take it something to be forever. Not only happiness, even pain people, when they have it, uh, their unhappiness is mainly because they take pain also to be something uh, everlasting thing. But people have not made up their minds when happiness is there, it's uh, temporary. Uh, when pain is also there, that is also temporary. You know, people always, uh, the moment they feel something because the nature of our mind, because of the nature of tanha craving, they want to keep it forever. But neither happiness, neither pleasant or unpleasant feeling, uh, they are not here to stay forever. Because our true nature, our true uh, nature of phenomena is always transient, always changing. You know, there's Buddhist saying, I think it's on, you know, it's a saying, the same monk who says that uh, this uh, shall too pass, you know. You know, every, everything changes, nothing is here. But people wait uh, for somebody to get sick, somebody to pass away, something to break, something to get lost. And they like to uh, relate that uh, quoting into that tongue because 
uh, this is uh, going to break and it is impermanence uh, and uh, we have to you know justify ourselves uh, this is dharma but they don't live their lives as it is our true nature you create a story out of it and you you put uh, uh, put dhamma into a story it doesn't it is not practice i can't i can't wait till my mother to die to experience impermanence of my mother i have to live with a dying mother in my life right now right here in my practice and in my understanding for to experience a mother that never dies that is the ultimate goal of practice when we say anicca dukkha atma so you wait for somebody to die you go to a funeral and say this uh, we have to you know god this us because this uh, this is the nature you know this is dhamma but then you experience somebody else dying but you never experience you are also dying in the same moment so that level of practice is very important then you will not find anyone dying outside of you then you ultimately not in denial the sensations are also the same now when when whenever panyamans uh, uh, sit down with you people uh, that is how you should reflect when he is going through uh, the scanning and all uh, right here right now you don't create an experience outside of you and say me myself is impermanent you say you create a self and that is impermanent that is not right in singala there is a saying ibbatu ibbata pihatu ne kila gino an ibbatu pihatu ne uh the the tortoise the, the turtles they don't have wings you know but what do we do we first of all think we of course uh, they don't have wings but in our mind we create first of all we give them wings and then expect them not to have wings <laughs> so similar story here you know uh, you create a self that is already not there then again you contemplate and say there is no self there is impermanence not like that you don't have to create a self to dissolve a self there is no self in the first place but uh, when you are doing your meditation uh, you create a vedana which is has not ever been there because of the wrong perception you have of vedana then you are trying to avoid then uh, your perception your of vedana your sensation Uh, never get sweet you know because you create a self in the first place where there was no self in the first place so please understand these techniques are very important otherwise you will spend a lot of retreats uh, you will sit down with a lot of masters and then you will not have results at all but if you can understand this very much then and there you are not there uh, you are going to experience bliss and happiness and nothing to worry no fear no craving no nothing so that's the most important thing when it comes to vedana anupassana it's not just looking at uh, sukha vedana dukha vedana adukkama sukha vedana first of all you have to be very sensitive to the nature of these sukha vedana dukha vedana adukkama sukha vedana you know the pleasant feeling is not going to be there but as long as the pleasant feeling is there you're stuck there you are you are holding on to that you are never willing to let go of you don't have to let go of pleasant feeling definitely it is it is transient it will move on but you don't want to move on then the unpleasant feeling is there you don't want to move on with that all so you just want you don't like the unpleasant feeling but in your mind you suffer a lot thinking that this is going to stay forever so you don't let on uh, let the phenomena flow you know that is a deeply rooted self which is not there so when you hold on to these wrong concepts when it comes to these perceptions now uh, sanya vedana sanya vedana is uh, perception and sensation sa chitta sankara so on that the chitta sankara level i don't know whether you will understand this uh, but uh, both anapanasati sutta and mahasati pattana sutta covers four foundations of mindfulness so any teacher who is going to penetrate into uh, the self or the false identity called the self uh, they will ask their students either to start with shamatha then go into vipassana or either depending on your experience either how you how you feel your breath uh, how you interpret your breath to your teacher they will guide you on either shamatha or vipassana pathways but when it comes to but when it comes to anapanasati sutta 
Chitta Sankara is uh, Sanya Sanya Vedana. You know, these. Um, if you want to, if you want to clarify these matters, uh, I mean, what I am saying, uh, you have to read the Chulla Vedala Sutta, uh, where this is all explained. Uh, so, uh, so uh, in 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 the Anapanasati Sutta, uh, it is said how this is how uh, through breath you work. You know, Piti Pati Sangvedi. Piti Pati Sangvedi Sukha Pati Piti Sukha Rapture and uh, Happiness or Bliss. Uh, to that level, you have to be sensitive. And uh, then, uh, then it talks about Chitta Sankara Pati Sangvedi. Chitta Sankara is uh, Vedana Sanya. Uh, so, my point in this talk is anybody who's interested in scanning, going car, doing Vedana Anupasana, whether you directly come to it or whether you gradually come to that level, when you, your, your task is to observe. When you are observing, uh, sometimes when you're observing, you keep on observing, but you don't observe the changing nature. You, you are stuck at one place. That is where the Mara deceives you. You have to always in Satipatthana, uh, uh, the goal is to observe the changing nature, impermanent nature, substanceless nature. If you can't grasp that, the three characteristics in your observation, you're not doing your vipassana properly. So that's why we have to tell something. We have to tell something in theory that you should experience in practice. But when we give something that someone needs to practice, and when we give it as theory, they try to create a scenario and, uh, you know, run it within you. You know, you, you have a sensation, uh, then uh, now you create, now this is happiness. And, uh, you know, you don't 100% observe that you don't sit with that particular phenomena. You create a phenomena and you think that you are doing it. Uh, we call it creating rupa you know, you create a self other than you and you run your pseudo self into meditation, but you yourself is only just observing your pseudo self and putting, running a, running a different program. So idea is never to, never to run a different program in your body and try to dissolve this. Buddha's teaching is uh, to observe the existing program and how to dissolve through that. So please understand, uh, you have to be careful with pleasant, you know, all these characteristics are very important. Uh, when you have a pleasant sensation, the nature of the pleasant, as long as it's pleasant, it's pleasant. But when it's changing, your mind changes. When unhappiness is there, unpleasant feeling is there, you're unhappy as long as it persists. But when it changes, you're happy. That is also false. And when, it, when you have adukka masukka, when you have a neutral feeling, you are unhappy as long as you don't know that feeling. But when you know it, you are happy. It also changes into the other way. So important practical points, uh, processing your uh, experience, a yogi must be sensitive to, to piti sukha at the level of experience in one's meditation. First of all, you have to be able to understand your sensations. That is the most important thing. And uh, the experience of Piti Sukha uh, uh, is uh, now, now Vedana Nupasana was not given to, uh, not given, uh, I mean, we are talking something uh, very limited to uh, spiritual practitioners. So Buddha's early teachings only came to monks. So he never gave Anapanasati Sutta or Anapanasati teachings or Mahasati Patana teachings to lay people. Uh, ordinary people, he didn't give these teachings. So uh, nowadays in the 21st century, uh, we try to experience Piti Sukha in uh, washing dishes, cutting vegetables, uh, while watching TV, going to sleep, 
and you try to do a meditation on your holiday. Uh, so I'm not saying that you can't do that, but uh, when it comes to the teaching, he always gave it to a congregation group of monks who are, who are always with their primary meditation object. So uh, teachers, meditation teachers, gurus always also from, uh, talking from that perspective. Even if you take uh, Bhante Dhammajiva, he uh, explains Dhamma through the focal point, primary meditation object, because monks don't have anything else. Uh, first half of the day, they go for arms, come and they live with their primary meditation object. When you are, uh, when you are, how do you say, when you are distracted from your primary meditation object, you bring it again and again, again and again. The same here when it comes to sensations. So let it be Anapanasati Sutta or let it be uh, pure contemplation of the four foundations of mindfulness or staying with Vedana. Uh, the same you have to think. It's not just uh, uh, you sit down and you know, you wait for the world to go and you know, let the world be my meditation. That's how modern, modern teachers say, the commercialized Buddhism say, this can be practiced in uh, every way. You know, the four postures can be practiced when you're cutting vegetables, when you're washing dishes. I'm very happy if you can bring your practice to that level. You know, but uh, monks didn't wash dishes or uh, they didn't uh, practice uh, satipatthana while they are swimming or watching TV. They have a very uh, precise, uh, they only work with four postures. So it's easy. Uh, but if you can bring that attention, that level of Yoni Somanisikara, that level of Satisampajanya, that level of mindfulness, that's good. Why not? But try to minimize this to your primary meditation object, uh, then it will be easy for you. Um, then whatever, whatever perception of light, sound, feelings arising through five senses, or the mind uh, need to be clearly noted, you know, that is also very important. Uh, all uh, what you call this body, your five sense bases, uh, uh, your Indriya Sangvara is very important. Uh, restrainment of your sense organs is the key to Vedana Anupassana, is key to every meditation. So these are the primary points in uh, Vedana Anupassana. First of all, you have to understand what is Vedana, why Vedana is there in the first place, uh, how you can seek liberation through just looking at Vedana, penetrating into Vedana, and uh, what is the what type of Vedana I explain in Buddhism and in our practice, how can we grasp of this concept called Vedana? And by looking at this Vedana, what are we going to dissolve? What are we going to uh, Are we, are we going into a break? Because I'm getting a message that we are going into a break. Is it too much? Panya, are you there? Um, no, after we finish, we can go into a break after you finish. Yeah, because there was a message going on, break. Right? Is, is it too much? I'm just keeping no. talking, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, so uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the most important thing, the sensation when it comes to Vedana. If you can't, if you can't experience the three characteristics in your practice, you are not doing it properly. Why you can't experience the three characteristics? Because you create a pseudo self, you create someone that is not you and look at that person as impermanent, that is not going to work. Right now, right here, the three characteristics are the only phenomena that is happening. But uh, uh, that cannot be experienced. Uh, that cannot be experienced uh, when 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 you like I said the butter pihatu dana again. You know when you create a self and try to when you try to create a self that is already not there and you know you are trying to dissolve that that is not going to happen. Uh, and as I said, when it comes to Vedana Nupasana, there are two major teachings I personally I personally got instructions on. And also the same teachings I'm giving to my students when we are practicing. Uh, so the uh, 
one is anapanasati sutta which at pao uh, that is the only meditation that we do working with our breath that is more than enough if you know the value of anapanasati that is a huge type of investment and insurance that you will have for your samsaric journey because uh, looking at the spiritual history uh, time tested from the very beginning more than 5000 years all yogis uh, worked on anapanasati even lord buddha in his journey to enlightenment he used anapanasati and in the tripitak also the major the most widely used meditation object would be anapanasati so there are so many benefits of uh, using uh, anapanasati as your uh, key to enlightenment uh, i'm not going to talk on uh, the mental clarity uh, the mental detox uh, and uh, your focus uh, your business development your ability to uh, pass exams and your ability to have a good memory uh, that in that way i'm not going to motivate i'm all going to talk from a very spiritual perspective why anapanasati is going to benefit you because uh, anapanasati is powerful in uh, in many ways uh, because anapanasati if you do it right you can uh, experience liberation right now right here and secondly uh, if you can't experience it within your lifetime it is said at the time of your last moments uh, you can you can have a breakthrough like uh, king suddhodana and so many other practitioners and even if you can't do it there it is explained in dhamma because you have the practice of anapanasati there is a chance that you would end up in a higher realm either in the brahma world or the Uh, how do you call uh, the suddha vas the pure abodes and you can uh, finish it off there even if you can't do it there uh, you will be reborn again during uh, where there is uh, the dispensation where there is the teaching and through listening to dhamma you can quickly realize and ultimately the benefit of using anapanasati keeping anapanasati as your spiritual practice the guarantee that we have it is explained in the dhamma even during where there is no buddha in this world where there is no teaching because you have carried on that practice of anapanasati throughout samsara uh, you can liberate yourself as a pachaka buddha so these things are explained so uh, so my research uh, to be very selfish in a way because we always like to invest on uh, better returns i thought not i thought you know you will also come to that conclusion if you research properly if uh, there is uh, you will not waste your this life or after life or in whole the samsaric life not will be wasted if you can invest your time in anapanasati <clears throat> be difficult in the first place be difficult for a beginner but uh, that is assurance that uh, you're heading towards enlightenment in the shortest and quickest way that is anapanasati so uh, i have explained how chitta sankhara uh, is uh, sanya vedana through anapanasati sutta now we have to see how a vedana upasana is explained in the, the mahasati patana sutta what what is buddha asking actually to do you know uh, in uh, i'm do you want me to recite the palit of uh, satipatthana sutta what do you what do you say panya should i well um as you seem fit yes yeah but uh, because I, I, the, just the english would be preferable I yeah, that's enough yeah no because in in uh, mahasatipatthana sutta there are simple very nine uh, instructions when it comes to uh uh Uh, vedana upasana nine four kinds of feeling here when a monastic has pleasant feeling bodily or mental they clearly know i have a pleasant feeling that's your quality of quickly recognizing recognition that is very important when they have a painful feeling bodily or mental they clearly know i have a painful feeling when they have a neutral feeling also that is adukka masuka they clearly know i have a neutral feeling now please understand 
none of these three types of feelings you create. You know, you don't create, you know, it's just being observant of them. When they have a sensual pleasant feeling, they clearly know I have a sensual pleasant feeling. This is uh, the, the fourth one is when they have a sensual pleasant related to five codes of sensual pleasure. We call it, uh, how do you call it in Singhala or Pali? We call it uh, Panchakama. Uh, we call it Samisa, the carnal. Coming out of your body, you will understand that. When they have a spiritual pleasant feeling, Niramisa. In Janic state, Preeti Sukha is Niramisa, out of body experience. I'm not saying out of body experience as in this modern scientific in terms out of body means um, the jhanic level Preeti Sukha. As a jhana factor, they also clearly understand that this Preeti Sukha is coming out of the body. When they have sensual painful feeling, some is a pain, but they clearly know I have a painful feeling. In this way, in this way, when they have a spiritual painful feeling, Niram is a uh, pain, you know, pain without attachment, you know, they are uh, they clearly know I have a spiritual painful feeling also. When they have a sensual neutral feeling, that also you should be able to identify. Now these are just, you know, these are, you know, I can, I can repeat this again and again, but to go into Niramisa and uh, all these, uh, you experience in Jhana. Uh, I, uh, I have given up on teaching uh, Dhamma for the sake of teaching and uh, so people can go with a list of names and list of, you know, uh, with the ego, this is going to be a lecture, you know, I don't like lectures anymore. Uh, but uh, when having said that, my idea is uh, for you to experience this. Uh, so uh, so uh, at the, the conclusion would be, whatever that crosses uh, your mind through the body, you have to quickly grasp it. When you have grasped it, if you are staying there with that for a long time, you are not doing it right. When you observe it, it should pass away. Then you will realize nothing is permanent, uh, nothing has substance, and ultimately all will turn into another painful feeling, which is also transitory, transitory, transitory. And you can't, you don't have any place where you can keep your foot on. Then uh, you will live uh, like a feather. You know, that's that's the most important. And there's this beautiful teaching uh, in Dhamma, it's called Akasa Sutta. Akasa Sutta is very important because Buddha takes this analogy of uh, sensations to be like um, uh, like clouds. Uh, so the, he, in his teaching in Samyukta Nikaya, this sutta comes in Samyukta Nikaya, he says, there are different kind of uh, clouds in the sky. They might be thundering, they might be rainy, they might be gray, they might be black. Uh, but whatever that is, the nature of the cloud is to uh, go past the sky. So he asks uh, the practitioners to see your sensations also clouds, they are not here to stay. And our self, our true nature is uh, not the nature of the clouds. Although we, uh, we like to say we are under the weather, because uh, depending on the clouds, but our true nature is not weather. Our true nature is the sky uh, in that sutta. That is why uh, they say our true nature is the sky, but uh, we explain ourselves to be the clouds. When I was at Wat Buddha Dhamma, Jan Kemavaro was my teacher. New South Wales is a gloomy place during the winter, you know, you don't see much sunshine. And I'm, I know London, England is a bit the same during the winter, you know, one day I came out and say, Ajahn, you know, it's a gloomy day, you know. He told me, why don't you look above the clouds, you know, look above the clouds. There's always sun above the clouds, you know, but we don't, we always hang on to our clouds and and if that feeling, if that sensation stays with you, if there's no allowance, the allowance for the 
cloud to pass, then uh, you are always having uh, mood swings. You know, mood swings are okay as long as you allow mood swings to go, but uh, you relate a life to your mood swings, that's a problem. You know, you identify, you create a story and you worry over that mood, that is a problem. So, Samyutta uh, Nikaya Akasa Sutta is very beautiful. In the sky, O oh monks, various kinds of winds are blowing. Winds from the east, west, north, south, winds carrying dust, winds without dust, winds without hot and cold, gentle and fierce. Similarly, monks, there arise in the body various kinds of feelings. Pleasant feelings arise, painful feelings arise, and neutral feelings arise. So also in the body the, here, feelings of different kind arise. The pleasant feelings, the painful feelings, and the neutral ones. But if a monk is ardent and does not neglect, to practice mindfulness and comprehension clear, the nature of all feelings will be, un will he understand? And having penetrated them, penetrated, please understand, penetrated them, he will be tame free in this very life without kilesas. Mature in knowledge, firm in Dhamma's ways, when once his lifespan ends, his body breaks, all measure and concept he has transcended. All measure and concept, gone beyond concepts go on beyond measure, time and uh, space. Because uh, if you don't penetrate into Vedana sensations, there's always an object. In relation to an object, there's always a subject. All these Vedana teachings in Advaita, Ramanas, who am I, Papajis, who am I, Nisagadat, all working from this perspective. So that's why Goenka's uh, Vedana Nupasana has uh, reach a global audience. Working with your sensations is the ultimate, according to my understanding. Uh, then if you have a good understanding of sensations, ultimately you are working on the Chittanupasana level, which Venerable Panyavansa will be delivering next week. <coughs> so, so this is uh, about uh, the teaching in concise when it comes to Vedana Nupasana. The technique, what meditation objects you are taking to understand this, depends on your personal practice. That's why I always ask, if you have a lawyer to yourself, if you have a GP to yourself, if you have a banker to yourself, if you have a travel agent to yourself, if you have your own shops, and by this time you should have your spiritual guidance also. Who's going to sort out the mess of samsara for you? Yourself? Not a good idea. Uh, so you have to sit down and uh, and see who can you can do this. But if you are a true seeker, when the student is ready, the teacher will definitely appear. And when the teacher appears, although he's uh, in front of you, he will definitely uh, open your inner guru and you know you're on the right path. Because I was uh, like Venerable Panyama, so from a very small time, I was seeking all the time. And like I said, I met Venerable uh, Panyama Deepa when I was at 17 years old. I had no idea, you know, I, I, I was not knowledgeable. It's for the sake of he's a forest monk and we had this mentality, you know, forest monks are holy and, you know, for that sake, I went and met. But now, having spent half of my life turning back, I have met so many gurus, so many uh, teachers who are compassionate, who has given me so many teachings. And, uh, and when I look back, I'm really happy uh, in my resume, in my circle, that I have more bodhisattvas than uh, any other you know, doctors or lawyers. I, I don't have much people that I can say they are well connected, you know, I, I can't say I have rich people that I know, any politicians, zero politicians in my life. I don't have uh, people, well, some educated people are there, but I have a lot of uh, Kalyana Mithas. I have a lot of teachers that I've met. I have a lot of photos with them. So I'm really happy. Okay. <laughs> and my time is over. Yes, I think we can go into a break now. Yeah, this is the 
this is one talk I have continued for two days now. You know, I started at 11 o'clock. Now I'm going into like in Australia, you know, I've done it like December. Like, okay, anyways. Yes, my So we will go to a, go into a break now. Thank you very much. So we mm. will, I think if we give people a good five minutes to sort of uh, uh, refresh themselves and come back, we will yeah, you can have your questions, yeah? Yeah, we will go into, we will go into um, our meditation, short meditation, and then go into our questions and answers. Thank you very much. If we now find our ways and come into a meditating position, I will be conducting the Vedana Nupasana meditation for you.
being comfortably seated. Taking a deep breath in, holding on to the breath as you gently let go of the breath, guiding yourself to the present moment. As you take another deep breath in, breathing out, relaxing yourself deeper deeper, guiding your attention into the now, as you gently put aside all other responsibilities and duties, and allow yourself to settle in this present moment, here and now, here and now. Guiding your attention from the breath to the topmost part of the head. Observing the sensations arising all around the head. All around the head. Pleasant, but not so pleasant. Equanimous all sensations, without any judgment or bias. Just observe. Just observe. Gently guiding your attention from the head to the forehead. Observing the sensations all around the forehead. Being aware of how the sensations arise and pass away, arise and pass away. Moment to moment. Changing constantly. Shifting constantly. Observe, observe. As you guide your attention from the forehead, to the nose, observe the sensations arising and passing away all around the nose, all around. All around. Being very gentle with yourself. As you gently, gently observe the sensations that arise each and every moment. One arising and passing away to the next arising and passing away. A constant flow of arising and passing away. Observe this reality and nature for yourself. For yourself. Gently guiding your attention from the nose to the cheek. Being very gentle with yourself. Imagine as if there is a sensation and there is a mind that observes the sensation. And put aside everything else. Put aside everything else. Gently guiding your attention from the cheeks to the lips. Lips to the neck, down to the shoulders.
down to the shoulders. As you relax the shoulder, the shoulder muscles, the mind observing the sensation all across the shoulder. The natures of impermanence. When you cling on to a sensation and the sensation ceases to exist, the nature of suffering. You being unable to control the sensations, the nature of non-self, playing out each and every moment, each and every moment. As you observe, it's a rising and passing away. Rising and passing away. And all the sensations all throughout the body, all throughout the body. Gently, gently. Gently. Guiding your attention from the shoulders. To the arms, the forearms. The hands, to the tips of the fingers. Observe, observe, observe. Every moment. Every moment. Being very gentle with yourself. As you shift your attention from the hands, the arms, through the shoulders, to the chest. To the chest, being relaxed throughout the session. Remember, all you are to do is to observe is to observe what is as it is. Gently. Gently. Continuing to guide your attention to observe Sensations all around the chest as you breathe in and out. The contraction and expansion of the lungs, chest. And all the sensations that arise and passes away. Observe, observe. Experiencing for yourself. As you observe these various sensations, although it might seem as a part of you, it is more part of a conditioned manifestation of phenomena which arises and passes away, devoid of your control, devoid of self. Gently, gently. Guiding your attention downward from the chest to the abdomen. The chest to the abdomen. Any and all types of sensations accepting without any bias or prejudice. 
just as we cannot control the air that we breathe, If we are to just breathe, we cannot control what we would breathe with the air. It is there. It is beyond our control. Sensations equally are of a similar stance. Just experience as you gently guide your attention from the abdomen to the thighs, to the thighs. To the thigh. Gently. Observing all across the thighs, all the sensations arising and passing away. Arising and passing away. Experiencing the deep sense of peace and tranquility as you observe these sensations in the present moment. In the present moment. Gently, gently. Guiding your attention. From the thighs to the legs. Natures of impermanent suffering and non-self. The momentariness of each and every sensation and phenomena. As you shift from the legs to the feet. The sensations observed. Observed. Imagine now that you have gone through the whole body and have an idea of all the sensations that have arisen throughout the body. Imagine letting go of this body. Imagine. Muscles relaxing, the whole body just relaxing. The mind relaxing even more deeply, even more deeply. As you imagine a state where there is no attachment to any of these sensations arising and passing away, arising and passing away. You are unmoved by these sensations. As you know the conditions that govern sensations. Being awake and aware Awake and aware. As you gently, gently guide your attention back up to the breath, from the sensations up to the breath, observing the in breath and the out breath. In breath and the out breath. With every breath that you breathe in, the energy, the body, being energized. As you breathe out, letting go, relax, relax, relax. Relax. Feeling peaceful, calm and tranquil. Maybe an experience that you've not experienced in a long time or even ever, breathing in, out, relax, and as 
deep, gentle breath in and out. Slowly awakening, opening your eyes, being fully awake into the present moment. And most importantly, don't forget to smile. <laughs> Lovely. So if there is anyone who would like to ask or direct any questions towards Venerable uh, Panya, Sri Panya, um, you can do so by either popping your question into the chat section and we will direct the question. Or for those of you who are listening, tuning in through Facebook Live, you could also add your questions through Facebook Live onto the chat section there and we will take the questions from there as well. So um, I will, of course, take shotgun and ask a few questions that we have already received. So the first question that we have is with regards to um, with regards to uh, Anapana and Vedanapasana. Um, Anapana and Vedanapasana. So the question is, is it important to always practice Anapana before Vedanapasana? Or can a person go directly into Vedanapasana and do practice Vedanapasana rather than starting it from Anapana? Um, now, this is the thing. Um, this Before answering this question, uh, we have to have a good knowledge on uh, and good practice on meditation. That's why uh, this question is being forwarded to a teacher or I'm the one who's giving the teaching here. Uh, the problem here we, with this question is when people take anapanasati, because the term goes, uh, it works with your breath, they only think it is just breathing meditation. But depending on how you do anapanasati, anapati, anapanasati embodies all four uh, frames of mindfulness. You know, if if it depending on the school, depending on the teacher, and depending on how you develop your uh, uh, anapanasati, halfway there only through interviews you will get to know where a student is heading. If uh, if a practitioner is more uh, more uh, into uh, if uh, the practitioner practitioner is more skilled in developing the keeping. Uh, at the parimukha, at observing uh, uh, the breath throughout, uh, then uh, they will go into nimitta and they will go into pachara and arpana and they will go into absorption. But if uh, someone is more skilled in looking at the nature of the breath, the, uh, the shortness, uh, the sensations, uh, uh, the heat, the warmth, then they develop more towards vipassana. So uh, it depends on how you practice and where you take your anapanasati and how comfortable you are and your, your natural natural development within the practice, it will only decide whether uh, anapanasati can be developed as vidasana or anapanasati is purely shamatha. So I can't give you a concrete answer and say, do you first have to do anapanasati to do vedana? There is a there is, the, the overall term is there shamatayanika vidarshana. Of course, anapanasati anapana can be used, and then you can go into vidarshana. Even at Pauk, it's like that, you know. First, you go into jhanas, then you turn the jhanas into uh, karagata sati, chatudatu avatthana, like that. But also, you can use anapanasati for the practice of. Uh, four foundations of mindfulness. Hmm. If you if you divide the, the four sets by four sets uh, at the Anapanasati Sutta, the fifth and the sixth and the seventh uh, verses works with Vedana Anupasana. You know, dissolving your uh, Chitta Sankara. 
you know cita sangkara sa uh, uh, vedanasanya so uh, the problem is the practitioner doesn't understand when when so many teachers say okay do anapanasati anapanasati because they have not taken their practice to a certain level they always think uh, anapanasati is one you know one clear cut instruction that it only works with your breath but mm-hmm. within the breath the whole body lies there hope the four foundations of mindfulness lies there the bhojangas lie there uh, and uh, uh, like the jhanas are there and uh, jhanas also uh, the rupavachara arupavachara and through the new go to nirodha the whole part is included in anapanasati so that is my answer to you mm. well, i so, also uh, remember that even on a traditional a uh, going a 10 day course the first three days would predominantly focus on anapana before they do move on to vedana and pasana strictly uh to through after the three days initially but but uh, going ka use anapana sati uh you going ka use the first three days to you anapana sati uh, not to set the i mean not uh, the practitioner to put on a uh vipassana path may basically uh to give the clarity and the mindfulness uh, to understand sensations mm. that yeah. is a totally different technique mm. but the traditional the very traditional technique would automatically go into these four foundations mindfulness as you progress uh going ka is uh, you force anapanasati into you whether you like it or not you have to sit uh, those three days silently without talking with anyone so at the end of the day you have no choice other than going through your sensations <laughs> yeah. you know that's that's the thing you know yeah yeah the the if we, if the, that person wants to further clarify uh, i can you know no i think i think we've shed enough light on that thank you very much yeah. the next question is now with regards to because we have mentioned uh the pansi and the pau traditions when it comes to both these traditions in terms of vedana and pasana where is there a sort of a difference between the vedana and pasana in the pau tradition and then the mahasi tradition uh, the pau tradition doesn't touch on vedana and pasana until you develop your jhanas you know and uh, and it's always staying with your primary focus and it's always about jhana whereas whereas uh, uh, the pandita ram the mahasi technique is always everything is about vedana and upasana you have kanika samadhi you work with the, the four foundations of mindfulness you take the kanu pasana vedana and pasana chitta and pasana and dhamma and upasana at one go with all your postures with all phenomena happening uh, uh, starting from uh, your tummy uh, like the primary object is you uh, uh, the how you look at the tummy uh but then and there then and their idea is to take a noting isn't it just to take a even vedana you you take a vedana vedana you don't even have a opportunity to see whether it's a sukha vedana or dukha vedana mm. it's just a vedana mm. you have no discrimination uh, according to the traditional way mm-hmm. so these are the two main uh, two main differences pauk is uh, anapanasati shamatyanika is just uh, bringing your attention again and again and again to your primary meditation object in the basic level pandita rama is you are at whatever attention you give it, it, it there's no attention to it you know i mean whatever you give attention is just a note yeah um the the big when it comes to when it comes to vedana upasana if we do take the vedana upasana which is taught in the theravadin traditions and then if we are to compare it with the tibetan traditions um how does the vedana upasana differ in that context if it does uh, yeah it uh, uh, like uh, this is a very difficult question to answer because uh with darshan uh, the tibetan tradition uh, the four schools uh, the gelugpa Uh, the kagyu shakya pa and nigma pa the all these four schools are highly uh, they are working with tantra and the ka gelupa school the dalai lama school is working with bodhicitta you know the rising of uh, uh, the compassion for the per se they don't have uh, uh, vidarshana 
per se, but they have a similar teaching called transforming your thoughts. They call it the, the, the Lojong practice. Lojong practice uh, mainly works with Chitta Anupasana. How do you transform your thoughts uh, to experience reality? So in the in the Tibetan tradition, my teachers have only asked me uh, as a uh, as a how do you say as an auxiliary practice you can do with Arshana, but when it comes to Tantra, the Shamatha is very important. Then all other tantric techniques you have to have a very strong uh, concentration, which is Shamatha, and per se they don't uh, they don't go through your body and Vedana Nupasana. Uh, they don't work on that level, you know. They they don't they don't have vidarshana per se, but there is there is a teaching because Tibet is a country. Until recently, they had all the traditions in the, the Buddhist world: Theravada, Sutrayana, uh, Tantrayana, Vajrayana. Everything was there. So uh, there is a mixture of uh, teachings and practices in Tibet, uh, but their major teachings are because Tantra. They are uh, preliminary teachings, the, we call it the non-dro. Non-dros uh, doesn't have uh, uh, vidarshana. There is no term as uh, Vedana Nupasana appearing in uh, Tantric uh, Buddhism, Tantric uh, teachings in Tibet. But my uh, teacher, one of my teachers said, I mean, we, we have a yoga system in Tibet and we go to the highest level, we call it the Anuttara Tantra Yoga. He said, uh, there's nothing wrong in practicing uh, Samatha Vipassana. You know, although the vipassana word is not there, there are a lot of uh, teachings uh, that uh, that uh, ultimately takes you to takes you to you know emptiness is uh, the highest level of uh, uh, darshana is emptiness shunyata no, so uh, so they have very uh, short uh, ways of uh, taking you there into emptiness. So uh, Nagarjuna's uh, Mula Madhyama Karika. Uh, Nagarjuna's teachings on emptiness are very straightforward vidarshana. So you don't, you only have to have a bit of shamatha. Uh, when the teachings are given, they call it uh, the pit instructions. A teacher gives you a pit instruction, and if you have established a strong concentration and mindfulness, then and there you will realize. So in that level, they guide you into these pit instructions, and they call it the, the showing you the nature of your mind. Mm -hmm. So these are the ultimate teachings in Tibetan, uh, uh, but there is no uh, gradual path uh, uh, well explained as uh, four foundations of mindfulness in the Tibetan tradition. Mm -hmm. And I have not encountered here. Yeah. Okay. So when when it comes to when it comes to a practice such as Vedana Nupasana, where the main focus are the sensations of the three or five yeah. types. I the, think Panya, yeah. yeah. The, the the how would one be able to continue with the practice whilst going through difficult amounts of pain? Now, this is the thing. When, when we use the term Vedana Nupasana, um, because Vedana Nupasana, when we use the word Vedana Nupasana, we have to understand because uh, the, the term is uh, used to put into context when, in, uh, when we got the teachings in writing from. Uh, but uh, what is Vedana Nupasana? It's life. It's our, it's our experience. It's our human experience. So, uh, but there's no other way. You can't write in a book and say you go through a human experience. You have to be very precise and concise. That's why uh, we use the term Vedana Nupasana, your sensation. So uh, your question to me was, how uh, can a person uh, take Vedana Nupasana into uh, what? Practice Vedana Nupasana whilst undergoing enormous amounts of pain. Enormous amounts of pain. Uh, uh, how how do you? The, the, what can we do? You know, our instruction is only to observe. You know, you observe your sensations, feelings. There is no manipulation. You know, you can't. But uh, when you are observing, when you are observing, uh, in the first place, when. Uh, you, although you have an understanding, this pain is forever. But uh, if you uh, go deep into your meditation, you will understand pain is a momentary thing. It's a, it's a phantom thing, you know. So uh, uh, whether you are having uh, post-surgical pain, um, or whether you are going through chronic illness, uh, whether in palliative care, 
uh, whatever that is, is to see a transient, impermanent, substanceless nature of pain. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but the problem is, but the problem is uh, when you come to pain, trying to observe, it's very difficult. You know, uh, this should be an early practice when you don't have pain. This is where all meditation uh, meditators. I mean, not all, most of the meditators uh, fail in the last moment. Even Lungta Mahabhuva Jnana Sampana Thero said, pain, through pain only he realized the full thing. You know, in his uh, meditative experience, he said he, he continuously practiced for uh, 72 hours. Then the whole body exploded like a bomb, you know, enormous intense pain before his enlightenment. Similar stories appear at Pandita Rama. Uh, the uh, Sado Pandita's book, uh, Enlightenment is Very Life. He gives a lot of encounters how uh, other yogis explain their enlightenment completely through pain. Now, I'm not going to force uh, 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 practitioners into pain and say that pain is your enlightenment moment. But what I'm saying is, when Buddha has given a clear instruction how to contemplate on pain and uh, pain and pleasure, uh, one doesn't need to wait until you get pain to practice this. You know, when, when if you have not taken Vedana Anupasana into your practice thoroughly, then when you go into your last moment, to what which amount you have practiced Anapanasati, you maintain that clear concentration goes away when the pain hits you. You know, on top of that, there's going to be chemo, on top of that, there's going to be morphine, on top of that, there's going to be a cocktail of medicine. So during uh, when your whole system is manipulated with chemistry, I don't know to which extent you can uh, focus on meditation at those times. But now, of course, you have, if you give elements to these small mosquito bites and, you know, try to chase them away, you can't, uh, you can't, you know, go through bigger pains in your life in the future. So uh, last moments are very important because uh, if one can't let the last breath go out and you don't, you know, it's not going to come, uh, then you have to be very clear with your breath. But that clarity goes away when you are dealing with pain because you have no teaching how to deal with pain. So uh, that's why the Padmasana, the lotus posture, the half lotus posture, even these postures are uh, given uh, not completely relaxing your body just to work with the uh, uh, trigger points and pain. Uh, that is also really important, you know. That is my understanding. But, uh, to answer you short, how are we uh, going to deal with uh, pain uh, during the times of pain? We have nothing else. We have to have good uh, concentration and observe. Observing is the only thing we can do. Mm. And when you observe, you will understand. If you're observing it properly, I am not having pain. Pain and me are separate things. You know, the mm. pain is just a transient thing. Lovely. Thank you. And the emptiness mentioned. Is it the emptiness you encounter when the nimitta disappears, when you are doing anapanasati, when you feel pain and when you observe the pain, it can associate from the body. Is that not the correct thing to do? Can you repeat the question again? Sorry, because yeah. the emptiness and some other question. Can you divide the question into two, please? Yeah. Is it the em emptiness you encounter? So with regards to the emptiness which was mentioned, is it the yeah. emptiness when you encounter when the nimitta disappears when doing anapana sati? Yeah. No. Short answer is no. The the the, the emptiness that I am explaining is is not an experience. It's not an experience. It's uh, it's uh, not having any experience. That is the ultimate nature of emptiness. Putting the emptiness into words is a futile thing. I just uh, emptiness is something that you need to experience. Me trying to exp, me trying to trying to give even a glimpse of emptiness. Uh, it's going to it's simple as it's you know what is emptiness? We are trying to explain nirvana here. Mm. So so uh, are you then uh, the question is when the nimitta goes away? I am am I enlightened? I'm am I in nirvana? Then the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. When you feel pain and when you observe the pain, it can disassociate from the body. Is that not the correct thing to do? When you uh, experience, yeah. yeah Would you like you to repeat it? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. No, I yeah. get the point. Yeah. 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 Uh, you when you feel pain 
and when you observe the pain it can dissociate from the body is that not the correct thing to do when the when the pain uh, can a pain remain without the body here it is i think the question refers to more the dissociating of the pain from the body mentally yeah. if, if a pain dissociates the body uh, 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 this is uh, uh, his uh, the uh, question comes from uh, a bodily pain of type of level not the mental pain here okay when when uh, when you say the body is dissociated of pain that's the right thing to do but then again the pain should also dissociate you know there there shouldn't be pain without the body Mm -hmm. that is the experience we have uh, when you are tuned into pain the, we think either the pain or the body goes away but uh, you don't you don't you don't you not usually uh, it's the pain that goes away not the body you know so they, then people uh, i think uh, the body the pain got separated from the body you know people could also assume it to be something of the sort like the body of attraction to the pain or the body of uh, the body which clings on to the pain like a mental body of sorts yeah it's, it is always there no yeah it will always be there <laughs> <laughs> always there. you don't have to you don't we are trying to actually uh, separate these two that's why in early stages of medicine vidarshana we uh, we use the term nama roopa pariche we separate the body and mind the nama roopa paricheda nama roopa pache parigraha uh, uh, bang you know like that you separate the separation in separation uh, if you separate it properly uh, the body can't uh, the mind cannot remain without the body you know all right yeah um thank you very much so that is the last of our question so if anyone does have any other questions please do pop them on the chat section um there are the next talk will be on chitthanupassana chitthanupassana which will be conducted by myself um uh, and can the I, can I join you sorry i can join you <laughs> yeah and 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 then the week after we will have dr uh vitharana who will be conducting the talk on um the manupassana and afterwards we will be moving on to the panel discussion where we will have all the speakers who have conducted the talks on the four satipatthanas and also some additional guest speakers actually guest attendees who will be coming to be a part of the panel so it is going to be quite an interesting uh exciting mix uh to be involved in so make sure that you have subscribed to the dhamma center so that you receive updates on all that is uh all the events and courses and programs that we have planned uh that we have planned um and thank you very much to venerable shri panya for accepting our invitation and contributing to this memorial service conducted in the memory of denmark venerable yana deepa thero um and uh, for being here even though it is not the most convenient of times for you in australia so thank you very much and thank you very much to all the uh, participants who have come here and uh, uh, participated in the program yeah, can i give a concluding blessing of yeah. course yeah can i do that now yeah yeah so uh, this is in memory of venerable nadi uh, and uh, we are not finished with the memorial service we have few more talks coming uh, in his name so uh, concludingly we should share merits with uh, uh, him and uh, he is believed to be a fully enlightened uh, master so um, but uh, uh, through uh, listening to kayan pasana and vedana pasana through all the uh, merits accumulated through this dhamma sharing Uh, let it be a blessing in your spiritual path uh, whatever you aspire for in your spiritual path my wish is uh, them to uh, manifest and fulfill uh, within this uh, lifetime and our blessings are always with you and uh, take care during this uh, covid time and always uh, there are so many instances uh, that you can reflect on life these days just i was googling the amount of deaths this morning in england it has passed 88000 i was so shocked 
because uh, Australia, we have no debts like that. And we, we practically didn't went through COVID in Australia, but I was so shocked. Uh, so there's enough opportunities if we want to reflect on uh, four foundations of mindfulness, debt, dharma during these days. At the same time, we have to understand the nature of suffering. We all belong together. We are all united in suffering. And uh, may our blessings, may these uh, merits be with all sentient beings and always radiate loving kindness and compassion to all sentient beings. And I wish you all the very best in your spiritual practice. And uh, don't forget to share merits with all the divine beings and uh, departed relatives. I will give you my uh, concluding blessing. Please keep your palms together and receive blessings. Abhivadena Sili Sanicham Vaddha Prachayno Chattaro Dhamma Vaddhanti Ayu Vanno Sukhang Balang Ayura Rogya Sampatti Sagga Sampatti Mevacha Ato Nibbhana Sampatti Minate Samijatu Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you to all. Good night and have a good rest of the day.